Okay, friends, you're back live for day one of the Willow 150. So now we're at the 150 version here. You're at the start line in Willow, Alaska at the community center. And we've got a small list of mushers here that are going to do the half distance, which is a fantastic way to get into mushing, learn mushing, work with your team. So here we are. You're joining us for the Willow 150, folks. Willow 150. So there we go. Emily Robinson up first, then Walter Robinson, and on down the list. So we've got our first teams right now. The Willow 150 will go up to Sioux Landing, take a 10 hour break and come back here. These guys want to go. They want to go. Uh-oh. Broke the line, so we're gonna have to work that out. Look at that focus, everybody keying in on the tasks at hand. There's always a task at hand. Div number 60. They're helping getting the tug line back on. Came off. Hi guys. Working on tying that back on. There's the whole team. There she goes. All right. Our first team for the Willow 150 on the trail to roaring applause. Right? How exciting. So there we go, Emily Robinson out there. That bib number on her sled is not what I have on my sheet, but we'll go with the sled, right? And there she is out there on the magic carpet. I'll zoom in for you. Bang. Team number one for the 150. Half the distance. And they'll go to Sioux Landing and come back. 10-hour mandatory. And mushers use this as a learning experience. Some more experienced mushers used to use it as a good chance to do a half race and camp a couple nights. Practice getting to the start line. All right, we have Walter Robinson up next. There it is, a full sled team. You're looking right at it. So excited, wants to go. You guys want to go? All right, so that uh, lead dog there really wanted to go on the left side there, the brown one, just being held with a little bit of a neckline. And then they're just focusing on the trail. They just want to. They want to get to their, their joy, which is putting out energy. Dogs love to put out energy. It makes them feel good. They're trained for it. They have enormous amounts of red blood cell, mitochondria, and they just have incredible VO2 max. So they want to run. That's all there is to it. Okay, so there goes Walter Robinson. And then we got our third team for the 150 coming up right here. I wouldn't necessarily know if a team had scratched coming to the start line because the bibs are different than the sheet that I have. But this should be Kelly Ridley up next. We're getting traffic control. Traffic control. That's what it looks like here. Getting the team in. Traffic control. <laughs> That's what waves the team down. So, uh, where have you been vacationing? Oh, man. <laughs> Behind my chainsaw. <laughs> okay, here we go. They can come up to here. Okay. They're, they're working out their final position. Hey, guys. Oh, yeah. Look at this. 
this guy running in place. I want to go. <laughs> running in place. So much torque on these dogs. See those booties all on, nice and tight. There they go. All right, looking great. Kelly Ridley. A lot of happy dogs there. They had to wait the whole morning because everything got thrown off a little bit on the timing. Waiting for the trackers to get in. So there's Kelly. Nice clean shot. We'll hold it right there. Off into the magic. All right. Fourth team coming. There's only about nine here on the Willow 150, folks. Um, so Jacobs is up next. And then Brianna, Samantha, Art Volm, and Ramey Smith. So that's the 150 lineup. Traffic control, getting them into the start again. Looks like to be at the start right now. Try a Jacobs here, folks. All right, they're getting ready to blast off there. Jim Cole from Three Bears helping hold the sled. Our is on. There's the break. Throwing some high fives and heading on down. Again, the 150, half the length of the main race, and then also more rest time built in. So a really good experience for the dogs. There goes the team around the bend there. So some of these dogs haven't done this distance, some have. Uh, everybody needs practice camping, so good to have the environment set up in there. Let's give him a full shot here. Those dogs will settle into between a 9 and 11 mile an hour pace depending on the team. Maybe a little bit more for the Nick Petit's, maybe a little bit less. That's a good question. Where is Jesse Holmes? He did not show up to this race. There you go. We are halfway through the start of the 150. And we're just giving you a long leg shot there. And then we'll come back up to start. We got Brianna Blongren, Blongren in the house. Kind of chatty, huh? <laughs> Great looking dogs here. Look at those eyes, just beautiful. Okay, you guys are talking again, aren't you? that break on you can really hear that break you have to have your brake on you got to speed management line management right away dogs have so much power 
You want to keep that line nice and tight. Lead dogs are the pace dogs. You slow them down. You can see the brake kicking up right there. A little bit of snow off the end. That's that drag. And you got to get them dialed in. You usually have a some sort of GPS or something on your sled that you can, after they get their initial race excitement out, you want to get them right into the rhythm that they know and that they love. You have different kind of lead dogs for different situations. You have speed lead dogs. You have trail finding lead dogs. Kind of like weather disaster dogs. There's different kinds of lead dogs. Some that can really find trail, some that can really hold speed, uh, and some that have different heads. So to answer the question of how many lead dogs would a musher want, you'd want a variety if you could. You'd want to have lead dogs in different, different uh, mindsets, and that way they get they get uh, different dogs for different situations. All right. Here we are. Looking good here. Samantha Lalonde. Samantha. There we go. Hi, guys. You got a good close up there how that hook comes out. That was Jim Cole from Three Bears helping pull up the hook. And then there she goes. So a lot of relief to get to this place where the dogs are out there doing what they do. It's a big relief for the dog's head too because they get so excited to run and then all that build up in the parking lot and they finally get to go and just get in their team rhythm, get out there, see what comes on the trail. There they go, crossing Willow Lake. Yeah, that was cool to see, right? Good little happy group there. Okay, Artvom Krutikov would be the next team up. And then Ramey Smith. So if we have two more teams, they'll be coming up soon. Again, if there's a scratch or a timing change, I don't know from where I'm standing right here because I'm standing right at the start. I don't see a team coming up right this second, which leads me to believe that the race order might have changed a little bit. Now, if you're looking for the Willow 300, you want to go to trackleaders.com and you want to start following those trackers. Sometimes they can have anomalies, they can have inconsistencies, they can delay updating. Okay, good. We do. So, who scratched? Okay, on my uh, on my start order, I had uh, I had Artvom and Ramey left. Okay, so Ramey's not going to be here, but Artvom is. Great. So that's what happened here, folks. Ramey Smith, legendary Ramey of the Smith family. Uh, he was entered into the 150, but is not going to be starting. And so now we're waiting for one more team. There's Andy. Got to make sure that I get on the close. I'm sure he's going to end it here pretty soon. I am, this and is I, the I got a small little town willow dog sled race in the world. And I got a question for you since uh, your wife and sister in law are heading out with this temperature change. We just had the warm up really in the last 24 hours. Perfect. You've been training, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, how, how do you think that 40 degree weather yesterday will affect the trails in your experience? Yeah, the trail, it'll slow down a little bit. Okay. But, uh, it's uh, a little soft. If anybody out there is a skier, you know that uh, cold, crunchy snow is abrasive and slow, and so is warm, sloppy stuff. And where did you learn and cut your teeth out here? Did you do any big races? Uh, I've done a couple. Starting the bike racing, that's my favorite. And then uh, I started doing some dog mushing. I met a cute lady out there on the trail one year. Blonde, braids, tall. Uh-huh. Pretty smile. Uh, somebody know her as Christy Barrington. 
Anyways, oh, uh, so I did all these qualifiers. I did this little 300 twice. Right. I did a couple other 300. That was four and five years ago, right? Uh, yeah, I think I did. 16 and 17. And I think I did it three years. And then uh, did the eight, I did a ride in 2018 with 18. the dog team. And then in 2019? I did a snow machine in 19. That's and right. And the plan is I'm going to bike race it this year up to McGrath and then come back. And uh, we're going to reassemble the snow machines again this year. We're going to ride the gnome. So I'm doing the trail twice this year. Okay, rad. And you have Rebecca, Joe out there saying go Andy. So those of you who remember Andy, uh, you've seen us do this a lot where we Zoom brothers Zoom. in arms here <laughs> and I rely on Andy's expertise. I have expertise in different fields like ski during and international race scene. And then Andy has this distance thing down because that's his life at home. It's, it's good. Boy, dogs. you start combining them too. It's a lot of fun. That's my thing is put two dogs up in front of a snow bike and let them do some of the work. And... Yeah, it's a lot of fun. You get to get the both best of both worlds. And your dogs are trained up to so many miles that as long as you keep that bike your pace for them. Oh yeah, but I get the uh, I get the puppies or the old ones and a combination of the other ones. Right. And but the A team definitely goes with Christy and Anna. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Exactly. <laughs> but I, we love to see more folks doing more things with their dogs in terms of the the summer it. fun on boats and then the bikes and the ski during and the. Yep. You get them out on the trail, they love to run. They don't care if it's in front of a whole bunch of other dogs or by themselves with a bike or a sled or four-wheeler, you know. they just These dogs get an opportunity to run. Bring them out a harness. It's like bringing out a ball for a lab to go fetch. I mean, right. Go, go, go. They uh, And we obviously saw that today. And then as soon as they break uh, out of here and start running, what kind of pace, when do you start wanting to pace them here? Oh, right off the start, okay. you want to pace them. Uh, you never let them run, let them rip. Uh, at least that's our strategy. We like to keep that sweet spot between 9, 10 miles an hour. And it's much better to hold an even pace than be the jackrabbit, the tortoise, and the hare style. Because you can let them rip, but you're going to have to stop. Maybe they get into a little bit of tangle or something, and you got to straighten out. you got to stop and fix or something. You know, you keep a nice, steady pace. Just let them roll. Uh, you'll have a much faster time overall. Okay, right on. And so how do you know what pace you're doing? Uh, you train behind the dogs long enough, you know each one. You know how they run, whether they're a trotter, a loper, a pacer. And yep. when a dog gets out of their comfort zone, they'll change their uh, their foot speed, kind of like a horse if you've ever seen a horse run. Uh, it's very similar to dogs. And dogs have their comfortable spot. Uh, they, they'll let you know if one starts loping, you know, who knows, maybe it's a simple thing like a, a little bit of snow building up in a booty and you just go right. check that dog, place a booty and all of a sudden they're back to their normal self. But you spend hours, days, weeks watching these guys run. So you know, you know their attitude, their tail flag, their foot speed. Yep. You know and these doing. are your babies, right? These aren't like somebody else's dog. You raise these guys. Oh yeah. Every one of them. Yeah, 98% of these come from puppies. We take very few dogs from uh, other mushers and raising them up. We do have a couple that come in from uh, other mushers to help fill out our teams, the last one or two spots. But, uh, yeah, most of these we've seen from, they say, what, behind the ears? Is that well, it? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're just joining us online, you're with Andy Pohl. I did a veteran, uh, a veteran and a husband of uh, Christy Barrington, so he'll be the handler. for the. So your schedule the next couple of days gets a little busy, right? Yes. Well, I got a little dead time now as they're out on the trail, but we got to pack up the trailer. They left all their stuff behind. They got to put away the poop bag, you know, <laughs> yep. and uh, put away the chains and then uh, assemble the, the truck, put it back together and go off to the next checkpoint. And it'll take them probably 60 miles to the next one. So that's six to seven hour run. Yep. And then we'll get the drop bags and everything set up so that when they come rolling in, they got their water bucket and their cooler and whatnot so they can have a quick and speedy time of getting their dogs fed and taken care of so the dogs can take a nap. And then the mushers get a break. And then it starts all over again in another 60 miles. Right, because they run off then to Sheep Creek. You meet them there. Right. Do it all over again. Then they run off the forks. Yeah, we get road a long house. break there because uh, we can't get the forks unless you got a snow machine. So we'll hang out at either Sheep Creek or we'll head up to Trap Creek for the last checkpoint. And then we'll be back here in probably two and a half days. I figure it'll take them. To get and out. where do you leave the trailer? Oh, well, there's a guy named Kale. 
who has a really nice cafe, drive-in, bed and breakfast, just up the road. He said we could oh, park a trailer. Oh, it'd be our place yard. again. No, we love it. I remember one year you and I camped in the house. We were we had the whole house to ourselves. Remember that? Yeah. This we're, year, we're a musher has it. And, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> and I got to be in Utah tonight anyway, so... Uh, which is, you know, it, it's a it's a great blessing to be here for the start. Starts are always exciting, right? Starts are where a lot starts, of things. Starts is, with, is the chaos. You can definitely feel about 20 minutes before the start. There is an energy level build. It starts out pretty quiet. Dogs are kind of barking here. There. Boy, about 20 minutes out, the booty start coming out. The harnesses are going on the dogs. Dogs start commoting a little bit more. It's infectious. It gets from one team to the other. And pretty soon, five minutes before the start, it is good luck hearing what's going on right so that when we had that build up right around 0900 and then when the race got delayed at 8 45 some of those systems and ramp ups had to be ramped down yep we stopped We're, uh, a third of the team had booties on ready to go and we just stopped yeah, sure. and we just paused yep and the mushers kind of looked at each other and go all right is this an alaskan race we knew the time was what it was but you know there's Little comments between the racers, but everybody adapts to it. It's part of mushing you got to adapt quickly in this sport. Exactly. You're problem solving. You're trying to keep positive mental around the dogs. One problem solve at a time, right? It wasn't a problem. It was exactly. just another hurdle to get through. It was not an issue. Excellent. Well, for those of you at home, uh, the race started at, in daylight today at 10 a.m. Supposed to start at 9 in the dark. And then we have our last 150 team right here coming in. So some somebody's getting a good experience here of um being supported and they're getting to the race line obviously late but time does not matter uh it's care of dogs and experience here you go look at those uh lines these look like great looking lines and here we are he's got his hook system all And he's just gonna go right ahead and go right on out because there it is. There it is. Yeah, time's all right. That's what we're saying. It's the care of the dogs. It's the enjoyment of the trail. We got time. As long as the dogs are getting what they need, we got time. All right, there's your race organizer. There's. Let's get a close out with Jim. Hey, thank you. All right, Jim, how was that? that was awesome. You helped, what now, 30-something teams get out the door? Yeah, lots of adrenaline, lots of, uh, lots of high amp energy. <laughs> right on, and if you're just joining us for the 150, Jim Kolb is the marketing director for Three Bears, our major sponsor, came out in person to help start the dogs, to meet the community out here, to feel the gratitude, and you've gotten, you know, hundreds of people online who have been watching all day, and they know that it takes uh, a lot of people to put this together. Absolutely. So thank you and thank Three Bears. Yeah. Uh, we're all lucky to have local companies. Uh, makes us feel like we're not just a corporate Alaska, right? right. Like <laughs> we actually have our home, our home, our uh, homegrown uh, companies right here. And Susan, uh, Susan just said thanks, Jim and Three Bears. So uh, and there's Brenda Mackey online watching from up north. So again, thank you yeah. and your org. And we'll be back at Sioux Landing tonight. Okay, right on. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to head up to Sioux Landing here in a bit. Uh, sorry if I look tired. I always end these days. It's been a long um, uh, winter. We're, we're still growing and developing in Willow. And we are, we're loving having all of the lodging guests and, and the different tours. And thanks, everybody, for the support there. Uh, we got Dog Power Movie back out again um, to re-inspire the world. That was my 2016 production. So click the link on YouTube. Watch it for free. Get inspired. If you've never seen anything like it, I can guarantee and then uh, we'll go ahead and chase this crew down, uh, sorry, up the highway. So we're about to drive up the Parks Highway, which is right past our community center, up the Sioux Landing. The Big Sioux River is out here uh, off the uh, escarpments. And so the dog teams will be heading up the Sioux River. And we'll go and join them for sunset. And then I got to fly out tonight. So thanks so much, everybody. We'll hopefully see you soon.